Next, we're going to continue learning about some important and fundamental attributes of a NumPy array, and also how to create an array with ease. So let's start by creating a two-dimensional array. So here we'll type in array, which will equal an NP array. And inside here, we'll type in one, two, three, and four, five, and six. That was very poorly executed. Now, when we print this array, what we should get as an output is this array over here. If we want to access the amount of dimensions of an array, we can do so using the array attribute. So here I'll type in dimensions and pass in the array.n dimensions, which is the number of dimensions attribute. And when we run that, we'll get two dimensions back because this is a 2D array. If we only had one, two, and three, which is of a single level, we will get one dimension back. Next, we have the shape attribute. So here I'm going to change this to shape and pass in shape here. And what this does is return to us the shape of the array. As you can see, we have a two by three array. And what this means is that we have two rows and three columns. Otherwise, we can also get back the size by referring to the size. And here we're going to get a size of six back, which is the total number of elements in this array. And finally, we can get the type of the array back by typing in D type. And that's going to return to us the type of int 64, because all of these are integers. And we can make this more specific by typing in D type and passing in np.int16, if we know that these integers are going to remain relatively small. And the next time we refer to the D type attribute, we will get int64 as an output, because that's what we specified in the original array. Moving on, let's look at some of the special methods we have for creating new arrays that don't require us to manually type out the data. Starting off with zeros, which will equal np.zeros. And here we want to fill it with five zeros. Next, let's print it to see what happens. And when we run this, you should notice that we will end up with an array with five zeros. And if we print the D type, it's going to tell us that each element is of type float64. But what's cool about this method is that we can also specify this to be of different dimensions. So here, instead of passing in five, we can say we want three rows of five elements. And we can also specify the D type to be of type integer. Now, the next time we run this, we will get three rows that contain five elements each. And the type will be of type int64. And you can do the exact same thing with ones. And we should rename this to ones, so this makes sense, and then rerun the program. And this time we're going to end up with a matrix of ones. And you're not limited to inserting an array of two dimensions. You can even pass in an array of three dimensions. And just like that, we will end up with a three dimensional array. Up next, I want to talk about a method which is called empty. And empty creates an array with random content which depends on the current state of the memory. The reason to use this over zeros or other similar methods is for speed. np.empty is blazingly fast. So here we're going to type in empty equals np.empty and we want this to contain five elements. Now when we print empty, what we should end up with are these five random elements. We can also do it using a two dimensional array and just like that, we will end up with this over here. And once again, you can never rely on what content this generates. It depends 100% on the current state of memory. So in this example, it might produce this matrix 100% of the time, but you cannot rely on this because if the state of the memory changes, this is going to change. Moving on, let's talk about a range, which is used for creating ranges. And I've read this as a range so many times, but it's a range. So here we're going to print np a range and pass in 10, which will create a range from zero to 10. And 10 is not inclusive. So we're going to end up with the last number being nine. Otherwise we can specify this to be from five to 10 and we'll end up with a result such as this one. And just like with most range syntax, we can type in zero to 20 with a step. And now it's going to step two when we generate this range. And finally, the last method I want to cover today is called linspace. If you ever want to create an array with values that are linearly spaced, you can use the linspace method. For example, here we can type in np linspace and pass in zero to 10. 
and we want this to be spaced with a number of three, which means it's going to create a range with three elements that are spaced linearly. Now we can duplicate this and pass in five. And what you'll notice is that we'll get something like this as an output. We have five elements that are spaced linearly. Otherwise we can change this to 20 and we'll get something crazy like this. And all this is, is an array of 20 elements spaced linearly. And in all the methods I showed you, with the exception of empty, you can specify the data type in case the default one does not satisfy your requirements. So in this case, maybe you want everything to be of type integer. And when you run this, what you will get back are integers. And they're not really going to be spaced as linearly as if you were to use a float, but it's going to do its best to round them. Otherwise, you can also convert them to strings. Personally, I don't know why you would do that, but it's nice to know that you can change the data type just by specifying it. And if you come from a language like C or Rust, you can get even more specific by referring to NP and passing in the data type you wish to insert, such as a float 16. Because maybe you don't care about all that precision that float 64 gives you.